we'll uh, change the, the normal format a little bit and start with the man on, on your left yep. because it's a, a heck of an achievement. Harry, congratulations. Thank you. Um, look, I know the statistics matter to you and I know how aware you are of the history of, of all of this. Um, just how special a landmark is it? No, it's really special. I think, um, like I always say, I think sometimes it's hard to really sink in whilst you're still playing and, and whilst these moments come. And, you know, I spoke about that previously with some of the goal scoring records. But, uh, no, this is one that I'm extremely proud of. I think it shows uh, great consistency over a long period of time. I think uh, when you look at some of the other players uh, who have achieved it, you know, some of our greatest ever players. So, uh, something I'm really excited for. Um, you know, I have my, my family there to, you know, enjoy the, the moment as well. And I think for sure a moment when I'm retired that I'll probably look back on with immense pride. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for the game. I'm excited to be back at Wembley. And uh, I just hope it can be a special night all round with, with a win and hopefully a goal as well. How many more caps can you win? How many more goals do you want to score? Do you, do you set yourself targets like that? I know you have done in the past. Have yeah. you set a, a one, one after this? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I feel in really good shape. I, I feel both physically and mentally, you know, at, at a peak in, in my career. And I think, you know, just watching other players, you know, like watching Ronaldo score his 901st goal yesterday and seeing him compete at, I think, 38 or 39 years old, you know, just inspires me to play for as long as possible. You know, I love this game. I love representing England uh, more than anything. Um, and I don't want it to end anytime soon. So, um, yeah, for me personally now, it's just about continue, uh, continue, continuing to improve and be consistent, and uh, both in an England shirt and that club level. And, and that's what I'd always do. And, um, yeah, who knows, you know, how many caps I can get or how many goals I can get. But, you know, I'm hungry for more and, you know, I'm determined to, to keep pushing the boundaries. Um, Lee, I've got to ask you about the man on your left because it's an extraordinary achievement. But anyone who has ambitions to manage England knows just how important he is. Yeah. That they have their, that has his backing and 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 his ability and in his goal scoring on the pitch as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've I've only worked with him for now for I think it's seven days, but you know, straight away you can see um, how motivated he is, how committed he is, um, how much of a good example he is around um, the players. Um, every single session, he's he's the first out. Um, and to have that kind of example for the younger players coming through um, is, is testament to him and you know his motivation. We spoke on the phone um, when I was um, confirmed for the job, and you could tell straight away how motivated he was to, you know, to uh, to win a major tournament with England, which is which is brilliant for whoever comes in. Hi, Lee. It will be your first time leading uh, the England senior side out at Wembley yeah. tomorrow. How much of a special moment will that be, and is it something you've thought about? Yeah, it's um, it's not something I've thought about until recently. I think um, you know it was a really proud moment the other day, um, you know, to to be to be on the sideline and um, you know another great uh, night hopefully uh, for the for the players uh, on Tuesday night. Really looking forward to the game. Um, you know, we've had we've had another couple of good sessions in between the last match, so um, I'm excited by it. Um, we'll make we'll make two or three changes, freshen freshen the team up a little bit. Um, but what I've noticed with this group is. Um, you know how, how motivated they are to do well, um, and you know you should really look forward to playing at home, especially at Wembley uh, on a pitch like that in a venue like that. So, yeah, looking forward to the game. I was just going to touch on that. There, how do you balance the expectation of England to win the match tomorrow versus maybe making tho those changes to keep things fresh? Well, I think yeah, with that that is the balance. I think if if you make eleven changes, it maybe sends out the wrong the wrong signal, but. Um, you know, like I said, the, the good thing about this group is that they are highly motivated to do well. Um, you know, so the, the, there will be, you know, two or three changes, but I'm, I don't see wholesale changes. But you know, it's important that we do manage the minutes. Um, some of the players are still in that pre-season phase. Uh, you know, basically against the amount of time that they had off in the summer. So we have to we have to make sure that we're we're, that we're protecting them as well. And a question for Harry. Congratulations on the 100th cap uh, for tomorrow. I know he sat next to you and you said it's only been seven days, but how has it been working uh, with Lee over this past week? No, it's been really good, I think. You know, it's bring uh, a new energy into into the place, especially obviously after the, the disappointing end to the summer. And um, yeah, it's been great to, to work with the boss so far and he's brought his ideas and his freedom in, in how he wants us to play. So um, yeah, I think the, the lads have enjoyed it. You know, we've got a good mixture of experience and, and youth in the team and you're seeing you know uh, the excited faces of some of the new players and 
Um, yeah, you know, we're looking forward to another another game tomorrow night. I thought we had a really good uh, game against Ireland um, a couple of days ago. It was a game that could have easily been a tricky a tricky one, but to be as comfortable as we was, I think shows you know a, a good uh, a good set in stone. And now I think going into tomorrow's game at home. Uh, you know, we're really excited to go out there and express ourselves and uh, hopefully get another uh, another win. Okay, we go Henry next, but Alex, if you can pass the mic back. Hi, hi Lee. Harry, congratulations. Thank Quick you. question for Lee. First, good luck tomorrow. Just on the sort of the, the traditional, in inverted commas, number nine, I mean, you, you talk to people at academies and the coaches and they say they're not really coming through. Is that because everyone wants to be a number 10? They want to play wide? Yeah, well, I think, I think just the role in general has changed uh, of your... Um, you know, especially the number nines that I was I was brought up with and, and played with, um, I think the the E Triple P and the academy system has really helped develop all round footballers, who then play in positions rather than developing a, a number nine. So, yeah, you see um, you see players that are, I mean I'd say you know the majority of, of full backs now were wingers, um, you know centre backs now are more than capable of playing centre midfield just because of their attributes and the amount of contact time now that academies have. So, yeah, I think uh, from from our point of view, from a coach's point of view, I think we have to be a lot more open and receptive to players' in, um, profile and their capabilities rather than their positions. Lee, congratulations on 2 0 against Thank Ireland. You. A great start as the New England interim manager. Thanks. Your decision of bringing in Jack Grealish into the squad has paid off quickly. He scored a goal against Ireland already. Yeah. What are some other changes that you are going to be implementing to hopefully su secure success against Finland? Well, I think we. Um, you know, we have to, we have to be mindful that we I think we've had six sessions now in total. So there's there's one or two three one or two things that we've adjusted and tried to implement. Um, but I think we spoke about this in in a while back in the first press conference that there was a lot of good things happening already. You know, we've just tried to make a, a few adjustments as opposed to wholesale changes. And the the most positive thing about it is that the players are open to trying something different or maybe being a a bit more risky in certain areas, um, so hopefully we can we can continue that. We've got total belief that they can do it. We try not to ask players doing it to do anything that they, we don't think they're capable of and mm -hmm. put them in a position where they're going to fail. So hopefully we can um, we can we can show people on Tuesday again that we're we're moving forward. And from tactics to mindset, what have you learned from leading the under 21s to championships that you're going to be implementing into the senior team? I think there's definitely a lot of similarities. I think um, regardless of, of, of tactics or, or game plans, I think uh, from a mentality point of view, players have to know that you believe in them, that you care for them, that you want them to do well, uh, that you're supporting them. Mm. And, and ultimately, I think if you can create that environment that, you're, that hopefully you're going you're gonna to see performances. So that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do. And in your first press conference for England, you said, really confident in the job that I can do. You've made a strong impression. If you get another win against Finland and you are granted the opportunity, would you like to stay on as England's manager? I think it's, it's been quite clear that I'm, I'm doing the three, the three camps. Um, you know, I'm really, really happy with that. You know, if, the, if it changes also, I'm happy with that. I've, I'm, I'm very privileged in the position that I'm in in terms of the, the head coach for the under-21s. Um, I've enjoyed it so far. Um, you know, it's, I'm having to focus really, you know, 100% every day on just doing a good job on that day rather than looking too far ahead. So, but yeah, if, you know, the, the most important thing is, is the team as opposed to the, the coaches there. They should, they should be the ones that are in the spotlight and, and getting the attention. Thanks. Hi, Lee. Um, just looking at the, the pathway that the FA brought in, not yeah. just for players like Harry, because I'll ask you in a second about your experiences for the pathway, but as a coach, how has it benefited the team, having the lads coming through the same pathway, having the same similar sort of experiences? How has that benefited you as well, uh, personally, as a coach? I think it's, um, it's had a lot of benefits. I think, um, I think we, should, we should also... Uh, we talk about the DNA, which is obviously um, the way that we want to play and the way that we want to coach. But the, the jobs that the academies are doing as well is a, is makes our job a lot easier. The players are coming in at such a high level, um, and the the competitions in for places to get into squads and stay in squads. Uh, that's why you can see that players are moving through the pathway quite quite smoothly. So, when you lose a player that goes up to a, a higher age group, the next one comes in, and it's almost a seamless um, transition. Um, a big thing about the the DNA as well is the the England experience. Um, we spoke about it before in terms of 80 odd percent of, of our players are dual nationality so they have options it's not just England that they can play for so you know when a player comes into St George's having that first experience in an England shirt that you enjoy the experience that you feel 
you feel rated, you feel cared for, is just as important as the sessions that, that, the, um, that the coaches put on. And Harry, um, obviously 100 caps, congratulations, but you. can you think back to when you were start of your pathway, under-17s I think it was when you first started? Yeah, under-17s, um, yeah, I played under-17s, under-19s, under-20s, under-21s, and um, yeah, we're, we're great, you know, learning curves for me, you know, had some great coaches and uh, I think just playing with the best players in the country helped me develop at that age to, to improve and, and see where the level was at because, you know, when I was starting out, I wasn't going to be the next big thing. I had to work extremely hard to be consistent and improve. And, um, yeah, and I think England helped me, helped me see that just by being around some of the best players. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, you're seeing more and more our younger teams have success. And I think that's definitely helping the senior team because as they're coming in, they're pushing us, they're m making the competition stronger, they're having them good experiences, even at youth level tournaments, but that helps them coming into major tournaments with, with the senior team as well. So, um, no, the future is definitely bright for us. And I think, you know, there's a lot of exciting players on the horizon and the way, you know, we're, we're performing as a senior team are just, you know, pushing everyone to be even better. Okay, Carrie. Just to check with you, Lee, have you got a fully fit squad, everyone available to you? Yeah, yeah, no changes to that, so we're, um, we're in a good position. And do you think it's a good chance maybe for the likes of Gibbs, White, Gomez, Nonny to come into the side and with John Stone's feature? Well, I think they've, they've all got a chance of, of playing. I think um, the, the level that the players have trained at um, puts everyone in the, in the, um, in the chance of, of, of getting minutes or, or starting the game. So we've, um, we've been very fortunate this week that, you know, having lost the, the three lads quite early, that, you know, we were, we were lucky to, to keep everyone else fit and, and ready for action. And also looking to this encounter, what are the key markers that you want to tick off on this one coming in? to Wembley to a home game you've already seen what your players can do in an intense environment but yeah. what what do you want to see next well I, I still want us to see t us playing with that control um, I think it's it's important that we, we're exciting to watch I think when when fans come watch England play at home you know they, they expect attacking football they expect chances to be created um, and to play with the tempo um, and us be on the ball so yeah I wouldn't see that being any different um, tomorrow and Harry, on the front foot from the off in that opening match, what's the mood in the dressing room coming up to such a hostile environment and putting behind the Euros to come away with a win? Yeah, I think the mood's good. I think, like I touched on earlier, I think the performance is really good. And also uh, to win 2-0 away from home and you know not concede hardly any chances shows that it was a, a really top performance. There was areas, especially in the second half, where we know we could have controlled it a little bit better and had... Uh, had larger spells of dominance, but yeah, overall, I think it was as good as an away performance as you can ask for, um, especially coming off the back of a, a tough summer. So, uh, yeah, now everyone's you know excited to be back at home in front of our fans. Um, yeah, and hopefully just put on a, a great performance. We wanna we wanna score goals. We wanna you know create a load of chances and, and play you know a, a real attacking uh, attacking style. And um, yeah, we can only do that as players when we're on the pitch tomorrow. Okay, James Allen. Hi. Both. Um, good luck tomorrow. Um, Harry, firstly, um, you, you talked a few times about Ronaldo and sort of being inspired by him. Do you, do you have a personal relationship with him? Do you, do you know him at all? No. Uh, I've met him a couple of times just at different events and stuff. But um, no, he was someone, him and both Messi were people I looked up to growing up. You know, they was in their prime as I was coming into... Uh, you know, teenage years and, you know, uh, probably when I was coming into football where I really wanted to improve and get better, not just where I love football, it was where I actually, okay, where can I improve? So, you know, I think both of them were inspirations to me, but I just think, uh, you know, to have that hunger and desire and to have that determination and, um, yeah, almost a sense to keep proving people wrong and proving to yourself that you can you know, be the best you can be. And then, you know, whenever the day comes that you stop playing, you can be proud of what, you, uh, what you're doing. So, uh, yeah, I try and use, you know, different players to, to motivate me, especially old players who are older than me. So, um, yeah, like I, like I touched on, to score over 900 goals in your career is something, uh, an exceptional record. And, um, you know, to play until the age years is, is really uh, inspiring. And, I think that just helps me and motivates me to, you know, know that I've got many more years ahead at, at the highest level. And a lot of players, when they get older, they drop deeper. But is the fact that he's still playing as a nine at his age, is that particularly sort of inspiring to you? Yeah, I think it depends on circumstance. I think it depends on managers and different systems and, and where you find yourself. You know, I think as a player, personally, I've always been someone who can play high or, or drop deep. I feel like 
uh, you know, I've got enough all round game to be effective in both areas. So uh, yeah, I think a lot of that depends on you know the ma the manager you're playing under and uh, the personnel you're playing with. But um, yeah, for me personally, it's just about you know being better. You know, with uh, with buying with the new coach now, you know, a lot of high intensity pressing, a lot of um, yeah, high high pressure situations uh, without the ball, especially, which is uh, helping me improve. And uh, and it's similar here with with England. You know, it's all about intensity. I feel like football in general is just becoming more and more that type of style where uh, you've got a lot of man for man pressure and a lot of one v one battles on the pitch. And um, and yeah, it's something that you, you know you have to be able to cope with because uh, it's probably only going to get more physical and more tough as as the years go on. Thank you. And and Lee. Um he played some really good stuff against Ireland. And, and obviously there was a sort of conversation around the, the negativity of the team and maybe they're a bit too conservative before you took over. So do you feel a, a sense of responsibility to entertain? Is that kind of part of your job? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so, no. I think um, I, like, I like watching attacking football. Um, I like coaching it. Um, I think I made a decision when I started coaching, that's how I wanted to, my teams to, uh, to play try and outscore the opposition, um, regardless of the state of the game. Um, I think, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's entertainment as well. So you want to, you want to create as many chances as you can and, and be in possession of the ball. So that's, 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 that's what I see as a responsibility, making sure that, you know, you're, you know, not stifling the players with your information, um, and to get the best out of them. So that's, that's what we've tried to do. And I know you've been asked a lot about taking the job on a permanent basis, but do you feel that beating Ireland and playing well, that, that you're a step closer to it. I, th I feel like we're a step closer as a team. Um, I'm, I try, I try not to think about myself too much. Um, if I'm, if I'm being honest, um, it's, it's almost insignificant whether, whether it's, it's uh, an issue or not. The, the best person should get the job. It's, a, it's an unbelievable job with a great group of players and potential. Um, you know, I, I know exactly what my role is over the next, uh, you know, three camps. So I'm more than, more than comfortable with that. James. Uh, Rob, if you can pass back to Simon Peach. And it's a question to both. Obviously, we're going to be celebrating Harry, his uh, achievements tomorrow, but we're also going to mark the tribute of to Sven. Yeah. So as a coach, could you just talk about him and, and his legacy? And to Harry as a fan, I guess, growing up, your memories of, of Sven? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I think one of our, you know... I'd say f most famous, most popular managers we've had as a as a national team. Of course, you know, um, yeah, it would be a sad night for uh, yeah a lot of England fans and a lot of England players, and uh, you know, it'd be a, a good tribute to to him that that he fully deserves. And uh, yeah, from what I understand, obviously, I didn't uh, get to to meet him personally, but uh, just a great person, um, you know, really. Really loyal to to his players and and his job and um, yeah I think he'll go down as one of England's uh, best managers and um, yeah from our point of view we just you know wish all his family and friends uh, their condolences and we hope we can pay a, a good tribute tomorrow night. Yeah, I was I was never looking lucky enough to to meet him to be honest. Um, I played against his teams a few times. Um, Obviously, speaking to to Ashley, who was who played under him, you know that what what he speaks mostly about is what what a great person he was. Obviously, he was a you know highly decorated coach as well, um, and the 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 period he had with England, you know, with the generation of players that he worked with, everyone speaks about you know the atmosphere and you know how how, how much they enjoyed playing for him. So, yeah, like like Harry says, hopefully we can um, pay a nice tribute to him, and um, you know he'll be remembered fondly by everyone, I'm sure. We'll finish back with Rob Dawson. Lee, can I just ask you one, one more? You, you said um, ahead of the Dublin game, uh, the, the, the Ireland game, that you'd worked, even in three days, you'd found two or three different ways of playing that you'd been working on. Can you tell us yeah. a bit more about that and, and what those styles are? And also, a quick one, is there anybody that, because of loading, can't play a full 90 minutes tomorrow? No, there's, there's no one. There's no one that can't play a full 90. I think we've still got a responsibility, though, that we have to make sure that you know, we're checking on their the physical condition live during the game. We've got that. We've got that. Um, that data so we can we can do that in terms of the way that we're playing it, it it sometimes adjusts depending on what the team is and the individuals so it's um you know with 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 the different players in different positions we have to adjust the team a little bit and it's just literally small details but uh, very simple um and hopefully a little bit more um you know 
um, quicker to implement given the amount of time that we've got. I mean, generally stuff like this, you, you get a chance to work on for two or three weeks in pre-season and then try it in, in friendly games. But effectively, this is this is another um, pre-season game for us. It's our, it's our, you know, John McDermott um, said that the, the, fir the first 45 minutes against Ireland was the, our, our best training session, which, you know, when you, when, you, when you think about it like that, I suppose he was, you know, he's definitely right that, you know, we expect so much, and this again, this will be the first time this team's played together. Obviously, the players have played in 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 three and fours together, so we're um, you know we we don't try and give them too much information, but just two three concepts in different areas of the pitch that hopefully will be effective. Okay, we conclude it there. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.